Hello, and welcome to C++ Weekly. I'm your host, Jason Turner. Once a week, I'll pick some topic of interest in C++ and dig into it with some live coding. In the last episode, I introduced standard bind. In this episode, I'm going to explain why you should never use standard bind. So we last left off with this example. We have a templated function that is called print. It prints two values passed to it, one being anything and one being a string. And then we are using bind to reorder the two arguments of this function. And we are doing some outputs and some tests here. And then wrapping it all in a standard function. So I am going to copy this example over to a new file that I'm going to call lambda. So C++ 14, C++ 11 added lambdas. C++ 14 made lambdas quite powerful by allowing us to do generic and variadic lambdas. So if we were so inclined, instead of using bind here, we can do a lambda. And we can say we want auto arg1, auto arg2. And now granted by just using auto here, things, you know, maybe aren't as pretty as we'd like them to be, but we can call print of arg2, comma arg1. And just like that, we are using a generic lambda with potentially even perfect forwarding if we were so inclined. But that might be a little out of the scope of this video. So I'm going to go ahead and remove that. So we're doing exactly what we were doing before with the bind, except we are using a lambda to do it, when by using a generic lambda and we are swapping the arguments. So at this point, we should expect everything to work exactly as it just was in the previous example before I started modifying it. So for reference, let's go back and we are going to do a compile of the bind version with optimizations turned on. Right. I had left off showing an example that couldn't compile. So let's do this again. Okay. All right. So that takes 0.78 seconds, uses 68, 66 megs of RAM. And back to our Lambda version, which is functionally equivalent. Let's call this one, that's the results that we expect. And we'll call Lambda and hopefully it compiles on our first try. And we see something that took um, nearly 20% less RAM to compile and compiled in um, about 20% less time also. And yes, I know I'm using VirtualBox to do timing of my compile data, but I also know that modern virtual computers are extremely fast and we can see quite a lot of consistency. Usually there's some variation, but 0.6 seconds and we can do a few more tests of the bind to satisfy anyone who cares. There's a clearly a distinction here. And I'll get into how I do some performance testing a little bit later. So we get the same results back from our Lambda version using 20% less RAM and 20% less compile time to do it. So that's argument one for why you should never use standard bind. Now, taking this a step further, if we were so inclined, we can also add a variadic component to this. And also just for the sake of cleaning this up a little bit, we know that we want our, 
second argument passed, no. We want our first argument passed to be a string. We can do that. And with our swapping of parameters, everything that works out. And also, something that I didn't point out earlier. Well, first, um, let's prove that we can swallow arguments here by doing this now. Ooh. So this is, I, I wonder, actually, this might be... Um, I'm curious if it's a compiler bug in that it's requiring us to have a third argument even though this is variadic and should allow zero arguments here. But if you wanted something that could swallow a range of arguments, you could also do that. Or, let's take this off because now by making our um, our lambda variadic, we messed with our function instantiation down here. All right, so we'll take that off. But something that you can do that you would not be able to do with bind is put an argument up front that you want to swallow, potentially, like this, our const auto. So you can just put an argument up here and say, this is one, whatever. I'm not going to bother compiling that because that would also mess things up further down. We'll skip over that, but just so you know, th these are possible. You've got a lot of flexibility. So let's make sure we're back to a compilable state here. We are, and things are still compiling in a reasonable amount of time. So the next point that I want to get to is one about performance. And we've got our example. Let's just do a quick test of... one to a million, say, plus plus i, and we want to call f of, well, let's call f of j. Since we already have an i, we don't want to shadow it. And that should do what I want. Yes, okay. Now we are going to redirect standard out to null. Oh, I meant to do that on execution. Okay. So just for to prove that this is doing what we want it to do, it prints out a million times. That'll take a long time to run. And let's recompile this, make sure we have all of our ducks in a row. With full optimizations turned on, and we can do that. And we see that it takes approximately 0.23 seconds to execute. Now let's take this exact same thing and copy it into our bind. Version, so there we go. And now we will compile bind with all optimizations turned on. And notice we're still seeing these large differences in memory usage and compile times. And let's see what happens when we time the execution of that. All right, still saying about the same amount of time, so perhaps maybe not the best example, but let's take another look at it. And I'm using call grind here to actually measure the number of instructions that have to be executed to execute this program. All right, 1,147,000,000 instructions executed.
and this is with the fully optimized bind version. Let's rebuild our Lambda version and measure it. Now I already am realizing that I kind of messed up my example a little bit by having IO involved. So it's a, a minor difference. We're only seeing a 1% performance difference. Let's do a quick modification of this and we're just going to comment out the IO portion. which should reduce the function to a no-op, and maybe at this point we'll get to see what the actual overhead is of passing things through a bind result. All right, that's the lambda version, and here's the bind version. There we go, perfect. So, by doing a no-op through a lambda, the compiler is much, much more able to optimize things than by doing it through the result of a bind. So this is another reason why you should never use standard bind. It has, in some cases, an extreme amount of not only compile time overhead, runtime overhead. And I was one other thing that I glossed over that I wanted to point out. In here, we are taking this by auto in our lambda version, and remember how I pointed out that in our bind version we had to specify an exact version of print that we wanted to call. Well, in this version we don't have to, so we can call hello float. Oh, uh, yeah, before I run that, everything would get lost really quickly in that much output. And we see that the float is properly displayed. So another thing to keep in mind, by using lambdas, you're getting better friendliness with templates, you're getting better compile times, you're getting better run times, you're getting better memory usage at compile time. So never use standard bind, always prefer Lambda, and thanks for listening. Be sure to subscribe, follow me on Twitter, and check out any of the links below.